uh, important informational session, and welcome to everybody at home that's watching this on TV. Uh, we had a uh, informational session on the uh, renovation uh, options that we're looking at last night, and this is the second one. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on this, uh, this has actually been uh, a long time uh, endeavor, whereas two years ago uh, we put forth a, re a renovation uh, warrant article, and that warrant article was probably about a $23 million um, uh, warrant article. And then uh, the next year, uh, due to the increase in prices for construction, we put, it, put pretty much the same warrant article uh, per the request of the board up, and that one was about $25 million. And uh, it, it was really uh, all-encompassing of all the things that, uh, that we wanted to do at the, uh, to, to renovate the high school. Since that time, um, there's been some other improvements in the school and uh, other efforts to, to bring the school up to uh, modern standards. And uh, due to that, uh, I think we're going to have a, a, a much more uh, palatable option for the, uh, the, town, uh, the voters in the town. Uh, so last April, uh, we brought to the board a request uh, of them if, and to see if they wanted us to look at, uh, look, look at doing another uh, rendition for the uh, renovation. And at that time, they said, yes, move forward with that, bring us some uh, plans and some options. And they kind of gave us a little bit of a uh, criteria of what they would like to see. And th that request represents the five options that you'll be able to see tonight. Uh, what we would like to have happen is to get input from um, uh, people here right now and uh, later on we're going to be showing uh, one of our last slides is going to be information from the school board, uh, contact information for the school board that uh, people at home can contact them and give their, um, their input as to uh, what they would like to see uh, happen in this process. Uh, one thing I'd like to say, though, is when you're looking at the options, the options are representative of what was asked for, but they're, they're not uh, final plans by any means. So if you see one of the plans and you just want to see one piece of it move to another side or if you want to see uh, a larger uh, capacity for any of the, um, the buildings, or any, any kind of uh, tweaks, if you will, to the plans, then feel free to put that uh, um, comment in with your um, suggestions for you know, what the best option would be. Um, so tonight, uh, the um, representative from Lavalle Bresinger, who is the architect of, of these uh, plans and, and, the, and the, um, the effort to, to renovate the building, uh, has sent uh, two representatives, and uh, the uh, one that's going to be speaking tonight is uh, Jay Doherty, and he's going to go over the uh, detail of the plans. And we're going to stop after every single plan to give uh, options for the or availability for the um, audience to give input uh, or ask questions. Uh, the the board members are here. To, some there are some board members here tonight to hear directly from the um, from the constituency here. And, um, and obviously they'll be available via their contact information later on for the people at home. So without any further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Jay Doherty and he'll be going over the plans for you. Thank you. Yep. Hello everyone. Thanks for coming out tonight. I understand everyone's time is very valuable, so I want to go through this um, pretty quickly. But I'm going to stop at the end of each of the, the plans that we're going to present. So I'll present them pretty quickly. But I'm going to stop, I'm going to pause to make sure you understand each of the plans that we're going to talk about. As we've talked about before, we know there's a need. We've, we've talked about, um, we just heard about the, the previous two years. Both of those were over 50% of the voters turned out to say they need, we need something, something needs to happen. So we've gone back to the drawing boards, taken our priorities and gone back to the drawing board one more time and looked at how we can do a scaled back version of everything that's needed. So I just want to jump in real quick with, these are the priorities we started with. At the top here, we have safe and secure building and um, the entrance with the administration at the front. The next part is a safe, secure drop-off sequence, that's site improvements. The third priority is improved function of the high school cafeteria. And again, that has to do with safety and security. 
Um, we, as you're familiar with the high school right now, the gymnasium and the stage, the performance space, both share the same space. So um, enhancing those two spaces so that they can be used um, at, at different times. And then the last piece is the, the community space, athletic space, recreation space. So these were the, the priorities. And we began to, like I said, take a look at new options. So we came up with five options. I just want to explain them real quick as they build on each other. And then we're going to dive into the plans to, to really talk about them. So option one is the simplest option. And that's just taking care of that new main entry, the entry sequence into the school. It is making a safe, secure entry and putting administration at the front as you enter the school. Option B um, adds on to that. It still moves the admin and the entry as the, as the entry sequence into the school, but it also does some cafeteria improvements and renovations, which also triggers some locker room renovations that will happen, and some site improvements that happen with that. Building on that, we have options C1 and C2. And again, we'll explain these a little bit more in depth in a second here, but taking option B and adding a multi-purpose room with a concession and a restroom onto that um, gives us C1. And C2 is that same taking option B and adding a 400 seat auditorium space with concessions and restrooms onto that. And then option D that we're gonna talk about at the end is taking all the pieces. So we have our admin, our entry, we have our site improvements, we have our concession stand and restrooms and locker rooms and cafeteria, and as well as a space that we can do gym, um, gymnasium activities, basketball or other sports, and a space that we can do an auditorium, a 450 seat auditorium. So I know that was kind of a world win, but as you can see, the plans incrementally get more complex as we go. So I'm gonna jump right into the plans. This is the high school as it is right now. So we have, let me just use this here, here we go. So this gray area you see here is the existing high school. As you enter the high school right now, you enter in at a space where we have um, a stairwell and there's a little cubicle that someone will greet you and make sure, check your ID. Everyone familiar with that process? So what we're doing here is we're adding a space on the outside of that that will have admin space on that, which is our principal, our SRO, some conference room space, and secretary space. And then we're creating a secure entry sequence with a double door entry sequence for kids that come in first, first time at the beginning of the day, come straight in. Those who are late or those who are visitors, um, this gets locked down. You have to go into the office, sign in, get checked in. Um, so there's an entry sequence that happens with that. It does not do anything to the rest of the school. The site improvements are very limited. <laughs> We're taking, there's a parking area here that we're creating a, a, um, a new driveway through and very limited site that goes with that. So this is a very simple option, option A. I'm gonna pause for a second. Like I said, I went pretty quick through that, but I don't know if anyone has any questions or it, it makes sense if I missed a piece on that. I have a question. With the work that's going on with the CTE Center now, I understand there might have been some offices and things like that that had to be moved from there to another part of the building. Does that impact any of what's going on here? It's a very good question. So the question was about the offices that get moved, the special ed offices and the guidance counseling offices um, that get moved from um, uh, the inner part of the school to this area. I'm going to try to highlight it with piece here, which are these spaces right here. They do not get impacted, so they stay exactly where they are, just as we had designed. They have um, one of the keys you'll see in, in later designs is giving them some natural light, and that remains as part of this, so. That Jay, I'm just gonna make a quick comment for the audience here. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna bring you a microphone if you have a question, because we wanna try to broadcast for people at home. They, they wanna hear your question as well as the answer, okay? So if you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic right to you. 
So I'm going to move on to B because A is pretty simple. I think everyone understands that, right? Okay. So B is um, looking at a couple more things here. So to get your bearings again where we are, if you would enter the school right now, you'd enter in this area right here. We're taking that area and we're, we're gutting it and, and recreating this space. Um, is it okay if I just point with my hand here? All right. um, so admin, there will be an admin space here that loops around. Um, so we get an extended admin space. The, the existing stair gets renovated and a new elevator gets put in that area. We still have the entry as similar to the previous concept with a secure entry at the outside. In addition, the cafeteria gets renovated, the serving area gets added, and the kitchen gets added. The, this kitchen location is in the Checkers kitchen location, so if you're familiar where Checkers is right now, the, we're going to reuse Checkers area to, to make a new high school cafeteria, uh, kitchen. The serving area will be where Checkers dining is right now, and then taking some other spaces and, and making secure um, cafeteria spaces for students to eat. When we do this, one of the things that uh, happens is the upper cafeteria, this one here, there's a locker room that's in this area. So as we try to um, bring the kitchen, the serving area, and the cafeteria together, that locker room needs to be replaced, and that would happen on the upper floor. There's currently a classroom on the upper floor that doesn't have any windows. That classroom would be turned into a locker room space. And then the, the other locker room would also be renovated. So as you come up the stairs, again, new stairs to bring you up, and an elevator, and new uh, restrooms will be renovated up there on the second floor. A little bit more about the site. As I said, uh, this is a rendering we, we had from last year, but it would be pretty similar. Um, you can see the existing part of Alvern right here that runs up that way. The new entry, new piece will be here in this gray block. We're really trying to create a safe place for buses to be, students to be, and cars to be. So creating um, different spaces for them. And then also a roundabout to get you off the site safely without having cars uh, crossing buses. That's a little bit about the site. I'm going to take a step back here. Like I said, I went through this plan pretty quickly. Um, but the admin happens, cafeteria and kitchen renovations, and then as I talked about, the locker rooms happen upstairs in this plan. Do we have any questions about plan B? Nice job, Kevin. <laughs> take home. I apologize. So I'm, I'm curious, the locker room on the, on the upper level, what would is that a functional locker room like for the, for the sports teams or is that just a locker room for? Yes, it's a very functional locker room for the sports teams. And what it does is it puts both locker rooms on the same level as the, the gym court. So um, it, it's, it's very functional. Right now, um, the, the male locker room has to go up the stairs to get to the, the court. So it, it would be very functional, yes. The, the quick add is, please remember the curricular component of locker rooms. If you're a phys ed teacher in the building and you have 100 students and they're participating in phys ed during the day, they need those locker room spaces as much as an athlete does after school before they start their programming. Getting them all on one level is ADA compliant because if a youngster in, who's a boy has to change and go up the elevator to the second floor, that's a very different, it is ADA compliant, it's not ADA ideal when the girls' locker room's already at that level. Should I move on to, to C, the C options? One's okay, understands B. One of the other things you'll see here, you, you might notice, is the way the, the site has been, been worked here. There is space here for a future piece that ties into this. So as we look at going from B to C, or C1, we begin to fill in that space. So as you can see here, we still have the admin piece that happens. We have the, the stairs and the elevator. 
We have the cafeteria that we talked about and the serving area in the kitchen all happening. And then as we move over here, we have a new space as a multi-purpose space. So in this space would be um, some bleachers that would pull out and a stage on one side that could be used for performances. And then if the bleachers were pushed back, it would be a court similar to what we're in here today. Um, probably different finishes, but on the same size roughly of a full-size basketball court. Um, there would be some uh, ramp space to get you up to the stage so it's accessible. And then in addition to that, we have a concession space and some, and some um, restrooms off that that could be used for that multi-purpose room. But the concession could also be used for football games or any other um, events that are happening in the field. You could uh, come up and uh, use the concession from the outside window. Let me try to point using this thing here. There we go. So you'd, you'd um, come up and be able to use the concession or come into the secure lobby here and use the restrooms or the concession that's in that space. So it adds those pieces in addition to um, what we saw in B. Can you show the second floor at any time? Yep. Um, so as we talked about before in, um, in option B, we're going to have, we're going to display some locker rooms. So with the locker rooms in this one, we're able to use the stage space because we're replacing the stage with the multi-purpose room is going to have a stage. So the locker rooms would both be right off the gym. So we have our current locker room that would be renovated off one side of the gym. And then where the stage is would be another locker room in, the, in that location. Again, the stairs, the elevator, and the restrooms will be updated as part of this. Any questions about C1? Jay, could you go back to the previous slide and talk a little bit about the security for kids going from one of their classes to the multi-purpose room and, uh, and how it interacts with people coming to visit? Very, very good point. Um, I'll try to use the, the pointer here and see if I can make it all happen. Um, so if, again, if you're a student, you're showing up right at the beginning of school, you, you, you get into the school. <laughs> After that point, all the doors get locked. So as you show up, you would show up to the first set of doors, you'd show your ID, and there'd be a video phone to connect you with the, the office to let you know that you can go into through the next level. The next level only gets you into this vestibule. These doors would be locked. You'd have to go into the main office right in here and you would be greeted with someone. They, again, they would have your ID, they'd have you sign in, they do all the checking process to make sure you should be there. Then there's conference rooms in this area. So someone would either come down from wherever they need to be to come down to greet you and to meet you in the conference room or you'd be safely um, uh, transported or, or um, escorted to your, your space that you need to go to. Students would come um, through their space and could go between the multi-purpose room and the rest of the school because these doors are locked down. So they have access to that multi-purpose room throughout the whole day. In the evening or the weekends or the time when the school is not in use, this set of doors would be locked down, oops, right there. So now you have access to go in, use the multi-purpose room, either for a, a practice or a game or a performance. You have access to the concession, you have access to the restrooms, and then there's access upstairs to the um, gymnasium upstairs. And you're locked off to just that area. You're not going through the rest of the school, you're not going into classrooms, you're not going into other spaces you shouldn't be in. Did I explain it? Yep. No questions on C1? We can always come back and look at these if you're, if you're thinking of questions or you want to see all the options and then come back and look at things. We can definitely do that. Um, so again, the, the big piece with this is we're doing a multi-purpose space. A multi-purpose space, like I said, would have bleachers that can be pulled out and there would be a stage so you have some bleacher seating and then you set up chairs on the, on the um, house level or court level um, for a performance. Or you push the bleachers back and it gives you a practice space that you can run practices and drills in. As we move on to C2, it's a little similar, the plan. 
with the exception of we're putting in an auditorium space in place of the multi-purpose room. So the auditorium space would have 450 seats on, 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 the, um, on one level. And the way we do that, if you're, very, if you're familiar with the high school, I'm sure everyone's been there, you know there's kind of two parking lots. There's the one the visitors pull in, you're kind of at the grade of the, the door, and then there's a couple steps down that brings you to where the students park, and that's a little bit lower. So we're gonna use that grade to actually step the seats into the grade. So these seats would be raked into the, into the slope. It has a stage, has accessibility with ramps to get you um, from all, to all the levels. In addition, we have the concession stand that would also double as a ticket booth. And we have restrooms off that. Um, as we talked about before, we still have the admin. We have the cafeteria pieces, the serving in the kitchen. And then we have um, the safe, secure entry piece as you, as you move into the, the school. On the upper level, very similar to what we just saw in C1. We're taking the stage and turning that into the other locker room, and we're gonna renovate the existing locker room. We have um, stairs and an elevator and, and the restrooms on this level. So this is using an auditorium as the, the new piece that gets tied into it, C2. Any questions about this? This one? I'm gonna just poke people a little bit to, to see if people will. Um, so auditorium um, gives us 450 seats. Would people come to a show in an auditorium with 450 seats? Would people come to a show, period? Yeah? See something? Okay. Does that number seem too low, too high? Is that too many seats, not enough seats? Just the right number? How does that compare with the Timberlane? I turn this what off. About Timberlane? Timberlane is, I think, um, 900, I think. They're, they're, so they're both about in the, in the thousands. Yeah. There are there different size performance spaces um, all over, but those are two great examples. Yeah. Auditoriums. Um, these were brought up last night, so I think the people listening at home. Um, the new Salem Auditorium has 725 seats. I think that was what was shared. Uh, Wyndham High School has an auditorium with 600 and 660 seats. Um, the other example that was used last night was Campbell High School with an enrollment much smaller than ours. I believe has 490 seats. Just another perspective. The other question that was raised last night um, was how many schools in New Hampshire currently do not have auditoriums? And out of the large schools, which Alvern is one, there are two schools currently that do not have an auditorium, Alvern High School and Londonderry High School that are classified as division one schools in New Hampshire. So if there was going to be a school uh, meeting, you know, for students, I mean, 450 is not going to be sufficient for having the entire student body be present in a, uh, a meeting, is there? That, that's correct. Um, and no other school's auditorium is going to fill their student body. So the example with Pinkerton, which is a beautiful uh, performing arts center, they're not housing their 3,300 students. Timberlane cannot fit all of their student body. The general rule I think that is widely accepted is you try to ensure that you can fit one grade level in. Ideally, you would fit two in. So if we had a school program where we were bringing in a speaker, that you can do a speaking opportunity, you hire the person to come in to do two shows, you split your student body and your staff into somewhat of a half and to do those two performances or those two productions. On option C1 with the pull-out bleaches, how much can that seat? It's a good question. It's, it's obviously a different experience. You're sitting on a bleacher than you're sitting in a seat. Right. But, but we're talking but about how to accommodate a group. 
a large group, and that would be a stage, so you probably could probably fit more here than you would be on be about 350 C1. in the multipurpose room. Mm -hmm. Be about 350 in the multipurpose room. So you get 100 more. Correct. And it was asked last night um, what the opinion of uh, that a minimum amount would would best be, and my answer last night was between 550 and 600, a little bit closer to 600 would probably be the appropriate spot or space for um, this high school. Um, I do want to let the audience know that uh, when we were going through these plans, we did want to offer something that was representing um, taking a cut in, in, in size from the 680 uh, originally and to make it more uh, palatable for the, um, the town to um, want something and vote for something like this. So that was the number we used, but I can say that last night the contention of the crowd was that it, this was not large enough. So um, it, it, we, we did take that, um, that advice from them that they wanted something a little bit larger. How do you feel? Do you, do you think larger, smaller? Yeah, larger. It's good to hear, hear some feedback, so this is great. Thank you. I'm going to move on to D. We'll, again, if you have questions about D or any of these options, we can come back and look at them. Um, so D, um, as we said, is everything. Now, it's not, every, not the same plan we presented last year. It's a scaled back version, as we just heard. So we do have all the pieces. However, they're all a little bit smaller. And I'll explain that as we go through. So this puts all the pieces together. So we have our admin piece. This actually sticks on the outside here. There we go. We have admin. We have a gymnasium. And this is not a, a gymnasium like we were pro proposing last year with, with bleacher seating for a uh, thousand plus. This is a gymnasium similar to this where we can do practices and, and, and um, use it for that type of space. We have an auditorium, again, a 450 seat auditorium. This is a little different uh, for a couple different reasons. I'll pause to just talk about that. One is this has a balcony level. So we have 300 seats on one level. And then we're using the fact that we're near the elevator to get us a balcony level. They can come in and have another 150 seats on the top. So again, we have 450 seats, but they're spread a balcony level and a main level. It shrinks the footprint a little bit. But one of the other positives is right here is where the music room is. So what that does is the connector between this building and the music building, or the music room, it creates the space that we can use for green rooms, for practice, for storage, and other things that would support both of these spaces. It also gives you access directly to the stage from, or well, through, the, through the back area, but same level stage to music room. Um, so that's, that's a little different than the piece we saw before that was cut into the grade. This is using the building a little differently on this location. Um, in addition, we still have the cafeteria pieces that we're talking about, the kitchen piece and the serving area. And then on the upper level, we have the locker rooms. Again, similar, we, now that we have a new stage, we can use the stage area as one set of locker rooms, renovate the other set. And we have restrooms, an elevator and stairs. And then we can come around and use that balcony level for seating on this level. Now, one of the things you're probably noticing is this is a bigger box than our one-story admin space we were talking about before. There's, there'll be a space between the second floor and third floor of the current um, high school and there'll still be natural light into all those classrooms but 15 to 20 feet away there would be a wall that would be that the auditorium space that is right beyond there so there are pluses and minuses to both options I'm gonna go back to the floor plan here um, again we have that safe secure entry sequence with the the triple doors so we have the first set that you'd use your ID to get through. Then you'd go into the admin reception and there's conference rooms, the SRO and uh, principal are there to, to greet you. People would come down to meet with you in the conference rooms. Um, in the evening or after hours, that third set of doors would be locked down to keep you in this area. So you have the auditorium and, and the um, multi-purpose room. 
This is option D. So does this option include money to turn the former administrative offices into something else? Um, it, it, it does not at this time. There is money, um, Mr. Beals can probably speak to what the existing office would, would turn into. The, the current plan for that is to do what we have been doing the past seven years in doing in-house renovation. So as we renovated science labs and classrooms, we would be doing the same renovation in the main office area. The current plan for that would be, it would be for specialized special education space, the therapy areas, the treatment areas, so physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, relatively easy to renovate for that. Cosmetic primarily, those rooms already currently have plumbing in them for some bathrooms that have been updated. Um, Added to that statement, um, the current counseling office, which would be moving, that area would also be renovated. And we've been able to do those renovations through the operating budget of the school district. Thank you. Jay, I have a question if you could sure. address, and I should have asked it earlier. Can you talk, going back to the original goal of safety and security as it relates to the cafeterias? You did a great job describing the difference of the checkers kitchen, the serving area. Talk a little bit about the difference of having two separated rooms that are now cafeterias that you can close versus the passage walkthrough that we currently have from a safety and security standpoint. Very good point. So starting option B, C1, C2, and D all address this, and this is a very good point. Option A does not. Um, so what this does was is it takes the cafeteria space and breaks it into two rooms. There's, there's some very big advantages of that, of taking that large group and giving them two spaces. Um, one, controlling the size of a group that size. Now we have two different spaces. And then second is it gives us the ability to lock this space down with doors so it's not, as you currently go into the school, you walk right into the cafeteria. This now locks it down so these spaces can be secure spaces um, that are not a pass through or a hallway now. So it does two things for us, rather than having one large, but it creates two smaller lockable lockdown spaces. Uh, one thing I'd like to say too is that uh, there's been some changes at the school um, over this process, and it does uh, affect what, what the plans look like now. Uh, one thing is that uh, in back of the school, uh, and as part of the CTE uh, project now, there's going to be a parking lot back there for about 110 spaces. So that significantly uh, gives you more flexibility in the uh, parking lot and the safety features out here. Uh, another uh, aspect that's changed is that uh, last year, I mean, sorry, uh, at the end of the last school year, uh, the board had authorized us to uh, make some improvements to the school, uh, one being the gym. And when the gym uh, gets refitted, it's going to have uh, new bleachers, a new floor, and new baskets. And when the uh, modernization of that space is going to allow for um, the baskets to be moved out a little bit, so it'll be a little bit wider, so you could do two concurrent practices um, at the same time. Um, and then the, um, another aspect off to the um, uh, side here too is that the, the, the tennis courts will be moved from where they uh, are currently and they're gonna be moved over towards where the baseball field is, close to the baseball field, and uh, they'll be over there. So those changes uh, that the, uh, the, the board approved uh, gave us more flexibility, um, brought the project down price uh, down significantly, and, and raised our options. Uh, when, we, when one of the options uh, uh, previously was to put an auditorium upstairs in the gym space, there's significant cost associated with that because you had to put the steel in there to support all those features, and that was a very expensive uh, proposition. So because we've uh, made the changes we've made, um, the price of the project has come down and uh, flexibility has increased.
So going back to C2, just a couple questions. So what site and parking lot changes would be in incorporated with that? And then also, can you show us where the music room is in reference for getting equipment over to an auditorium? Mm -hmm. And then also, can you point out the concessions and how the rest of the school would be locked if that were to be used specifically, say, after hours for football, if it weren't an auditorium performance, but it was using the concession space? Three good questions. Let me see if I can answer them all. <laughs> okay. So the site is very similar to the site we looked at before. Again, if your current um, entry is in there, we're trying to se separate the cars, the buses, and the students. So similar concept. Um, B, C1, C2, and D. Just that box changes a little bit, that gray box we have there. The, to get to the stage, it is going to be a little difficult. Yeah. So it, it, your music room is here. Um, there are obviously pluses and minuses with having it there versus here. Um, you'd have to go around the school, down the hallway, into the music room or into the, the auditorium. There is a ramp, so if there's, there's something that's heavy that needs to be wheeled, it would be wheeled down the ramp and onto the stage. Um, but yes, that is a, a much longer um, pathway versus it being up here. That's a very good observation. Um, and your, your question about concessions. So concessions could be, um, Again, these are concepts, and we, we'd love to hear some input of how this all works. But what, the way we're showing them right now is the concessions has a couple different ways they can be used. Oops. So if you're coming in from the, the football field, there's a gate here that would be locked most of the time. Um, however, for events, um, that gate would be opened, and you'd get you into this patio courtyard space. There's a window here that gets you the concession area. So you, could, um, you can go up to that concession area and, and buy things. Um, or you can come into the lobby space, and this would be locked down, so you'd be in the lobby space, and you could use the restrooms or the concessions from the inside. So that's what we, we're planning. Yeah. So this is probably a minutia kind of question, but when the kitchen that's currently the kitchen uh, was built, it was built too small, and it didn't have important things like dishwashers and things like that, ovens. Um, and so I just, uh, I, I think part of looking forward to making something like this is making sure that, that we will be using a, a more sustainable kind of space where we don't throw away dishes that every, the, the styrofoam and the other kinds of uh, things that we've had to use for all these years, but that we'll be able to have a um, little bit more conservation oriented kind of kitchen. We spoke a little bit about this last night, not about that specifically, but we did speak about the fact that it's gonna be vastly important to look at the plan that is gonna be good for the long term. Because, uh, for instance, if, if we did do a 450 seat auditorium, we don't want to be regretful afterwards that we should have done 600. So whatever these changes that you're, that you're talking about, we do have to talk about these things now because we have to live with this for a long time and, and, and benefit from it for a long time. But we want to make the right decision. So to that point, we want to make sure that all these bases are covered and the, these considerations are put into the plan. So I appreciate that. Could, could we go back through all the plans and go through the costs associated for each of the plans? Definitely can, yep. Any, any other questions with D before I do that? I, I will definitely jump into that right next. Do you have a question about D? Would it be op an option? No, nope. can you go back oh, to the other go one? back to Sorry. I'm sorry. Would it be an option instead of having the uh, a theater auditorium up there is to have it as you do in option D and kind of switch the, the two buildings right now, have the auditorium close to the music room but in the front and then have the offices in the back rather than having it the yeah, complexed. We definitely can. That's, that's a very good observation. That's a minor detail that definitely we'll want to hear. Um, that, that's a very good option. We could slide it here, which would, which would make that relationship um, better. But it, it, on the upper floor, it, it doesn't make it better. So I guess which, uh, you know, the, the views of the classrooms on the upper level 
um, in D aren't the best. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have it over there. So we definitely could do that, and that's um, something I think we should explore right. to see how it would and, fit. And that was yeah. a popular option last night, or a yeah. popular request last night, that people said, could we do that? Um, besides the, the wall being right there, I think another consideration that everyone has to have, too, is when you're doing a renovation like this, it tends to be, you know, we're going to have on the other side of the building is going to be the, the new CTE um, center, and that's going to be a gem on that side. There's no doubt about it. The traditional part of the school is still going to be, you know, a, a, a beautiful thing to look at. But when you have this brand new piece put on this end, you want it to be uh, uh, something that, you know, brings in the focus of the eye when you're driving by or when you're coming into the school. And, and uh, putting the auditorium on that side um, kind of hides it behind the building a little bit, too. So uh, th some things that were sp spoken about last night is maybe if it could be moved up a little bit so that you, you do see it from the parking lot, you do see it from the road, and so the beautiful part, uh, you know, of the beautiful new part can be, uh, you know, uh, I guess, uh, accentuated um, so that people can uh, appreciate it. Question about that. As a member of the Sustainability Committee, I just have a comment. I hope that in the process of planning all of these, that you are considering every possible energy efficiency and, and how this is going to um, save us energy and be good for the environment. Very good point. We, um, one of the things we really try to do is improve the, um, the envelope or the walls to make sure um, we're, not, we're using less energy to begin with because if we can have a very sustainable wall system, a high, high R value or a sustainable wall, um, your energy bills are going to come down based on that. So yes, we are looking at those types of things as well as other sustainable pieces. Yes, yep. Um, I'm going to move forward unless we have any more questions on D. I just want to look at the options one more time. And again, we can come back and, and talk about these. I'd love to talk later um, a little bit about the option of having the auditorium here versus the other side and, and getting more, um, more people's input on that because that's a very good observation. Um, quick um, matrix showing us option A, B, C1, C2, and D. We have a safe, secure building entry and an admin um, area. That's option A, and that's basically all we're doing on that. B, we have those two pieces, but we also add the security and safety of the site into that, which is um, a, a big feature to that, as well as the cafeteria improvements that we've been talking about, the locker rooms and the, um, the second floor access into that. And um, so that's option B. Option C takes everything we just talked about in option B and adds a concession and restrooms into that as well as a multi-purpose space that can be used for the auditorium or your performance um, spaces for your students and a practice gymnasium into that. Um, on option C2, it does everything except for that multi-purpose room um, isn't there. It's now a auditorium space that you can use for um, different performances. And then option D takes all those pieces doesn't give you the multi-purpose, but gives you the performance space and the practice space. Um, so that's option D. Now, as you ask the, the numbers, um, the numbers are our opinion of cost of where we are right now. So based on the square footage we're showing right now, um, we've worked with Harvey Con um, Construction, who's um, provided us some dollars per square foot to help us figure out order of magnitude for this. So we have the order of magnitude. If we start to add more seats or delete seats, obviously these numbers change. Um, if we're looking at an auditorium space or even if we're looking at a gymnasium or we're adding any kind of um, additional spaces to that. So our numbers at the moment, we're looking at option A is um, about two and a half million. So that's just adding that piece on the front with the admin, safe, secure entry, and um, the security pieces we talked about at the front of the school. When we add in the site and renovating the high school with the cafeteria pieces we talked about, the kitchen pieces, the serving area, and the locker rooms, access to the upper floor and the elevator, and all those pieces that tie into that, it substantially jumps us up to about 11 and a half million. 
When we take that plan and we start to add pieces onto it, we add the multi-purpose room. We're about four and a half, or excuse me, 14 and a half, or 14.3. That's with the multi-purpose room added onto that. Or if we take that, again, that option B, and instead of adding the multi-purpose room, we add that auditorium space onto it, it gets us to, and that's 450 seats, that gets us to um, uh, 16 million. In addition, if we put all the pieces together at the 450 seats, the practice gymnasium and all the other pieces we talked about, safe, secure entry, site, and the renovations to the, the high school, we're about 18.2. That's all the pieces put together. And one question that came up last night too was the difference between C2 and D, uh, because that gives you gym space uh, in addition to the auditorium from C2. And why is it, uh, you know, so the $2 million jump, um, if, it, if you were going to do that as standalone, Jim, it would be uh, much closer to $3 million or maybe even a little bit over that. But because you're, you're building walls already, then you can build the gym off of that. And there's a significant savings to, um, to put that piece on compared to it being a standalone feature. And could you talk a little bit about the, how the costs are derived? Um, the hard cost, the soft cost, the contingency, and so forth? Correct. So um, these are all lean costs. So this would be the bottom line number. So that includes the bricks and mortar and all those pieces that go into it. It also includes um, soft costs, which are your, your engineering fees, your testing fees, um, bond fees, all the other fees that are associated as, are called soft costs. In addition to that, we have a contingency in there. And we um, obviously want to carry a contingency at this point and even as we move into construction for any un unknown or unforeseen things. So this is an all-in number that carries all those pieces in the number. Maybe I can just interrupt and give you a little bit of tax impact information. You, so what we did, of course, the board will make all the final decisions, but these will just give you estimates. So looking at the $2 million five, we looked at um, borrowing that money for 10 years. I'm going to give you the tax impact on year two because year one is only interest payment, so year two will be the highest impact there is. So for the two million five for a ten year bond, the if you valued a home at three hundred thousand dollars, it would be a thirty dollar tax impact. Option B with eleven million five, I looked at borrowing that for twenty years. It would be approximately ninety dollars per year. The next three options we looked at borrowing for 30 years. So the 14.3 would be $96, the 16 million would be $108, and the 18.2 would be $123. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know this would come up at a deliberative session, so does that also include all the equipment, the, the uh, new kitchen equipment, the seats, um, all of that stuff in terms of uh, the total cost? Yeah, yes, it does. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I missed that. Yes, it does. All the, all the equipment that goes with that. So for the auditorium, obviously the seats, um, the curtains, the, the, the lighting okay. package, all the pieces that go with that, and the gymnasium, obviously the hoops and the pads and everything, yes. So it does include all the equipment. Okay. I'm just curious, uh, what kind of bond rates are we looking at for, for interest at this time? So the estimates that I read you are from New Hampshire Bond Bank. So depending on the short term, started at 3.25, and the long term was at 4.25. Of course, once again, they would go out to bid at the time of borrowing. And just for consideration, one um, string of conversation that happened last night, um, concerned option C2 uh, versus option D. So in the original plans uh, in year one and two, when, when we put this on a one article, uh, one of the features of the plan was a double gym. And we felt that was important because um, kids do uh, spend a lot of time at the school uh, because they, you know, the practice time is um, very valuable and, so, and it builds up. And some kids are there as late as 9:30 at night um, before, you know, 
by the time they get done with the court. Um, with the, uh, the advent of the new gym uh, upstairs, where you can you know, have two practices going on at the same time, um, that does relieve that a little bit. And uh, there's another um, good sized uh, practice space for either cheerleading, wrestling, uh, that has a high ceiling, and that's our new fitness area in, uh, the, for the ROTC, which is part of the CTE um, addition that's going on now. And um, people thought that was important because some of the, some of the needs have been addressed um, with those spaces. Um, there's still some people that felt, you know, that they wanted to have uh, an auditorium and, and keep a, uh, a practice, a full-size practice spot, which is option D. Um, and so, we, like I said, we made all those available, but um, there's, been, there's been some more flexibility and uh, better use of space um, since the first two options came out, in addition to the fact that it's uh, $7 million less than the le uh, last uh, Warren article. So we're going to we're going to do the straw poll in a few minutes, but I just want to again just if you have any more questions on any of these, or if anyone has any um, things they're thinking about, they like in any of these plans or don't like in any of these plans that they kind of want to make vocal. It, it's going to any feedback like that's going to help us. So in option D, I could see green rooms maybe changing rooms for the stage. In option C, where does that happen? Because now they run back into the math wing and use those as changing rooms. And obviously now things are going to be more shut off and sequestered. Is there a space for that? A good, good question. There is a minimal space for that right now in the current C2 option we're showing. but. Um, from your comment, it sounds like maybe that's something we should consider adding some, some spaces that would, could serve as that, if, if, if I'm understanding your comment. And if you did, in C2, if you move the auditorium from where it is over to where it was in D, then you would have that connection again to have the green, uh, the green rooms and um, so forth. Yeah, that sounded like a really good idea, so yeah. <laughs> And, and the, the one thing you lose with that, obviously, is you have the building right outside the windows of the other classrooms. Just moving in each of the options, the administration include the counseling spaces that were included in the article last year. So, so counseling, like guidance counseling, so are counsel those offices also moved? School counseling and special education uh, administration offices, conference rooms, so forth, they got moved uh, during the CTE uh, part. And so those parts are taken care of. And that was another uh, reduction in cost um, that, that we were able to put through the CTE and take away from a renovation need. And um, uh, that uh, allowed us not to have such a big administrative area because it was, it was a totally different configuration before where you would come in and there would be you know, a string of offices along with a string of um, a couple of different conference rooms. So that actually improved our uh, opportunity to, to give this at a more reasonable price. Jay, for the people at home, could you go backwards a couple of slides and I think it'll make the superintendent's point, uh, point perfectly. Uh, to the upper end, Jay will walk you through where that whole new suite is and that is part of the CT project. So currently, or last year, this was engineering and art were in this space. They're being renovated um, this year to be special ed spaces um, as um, not student spaces, but uh, administration special ed spaces and counseling spaces. So we have um, career counseling spaces here on this side. And then we have special ed spaces on this side. Um, what it does is it gives us the opportunity to have spaces in between that can be shared between those two groups, like um, restrooms and storage rooms and conference rooms and all those spaces that can be shared between those two groups. Um, it also, with the, the way it's set up with career counseling being accessible easily from the hallway and special ed as they um, see a lot of visitors, um, 
would be very accessible via this side. So the way they, they intertwine there works really well. And the so last the piece of clarification, the superintendent and I referenced part of the CT project from the very inception through the voting process deliberative session, that is all locally funded but in the CT project. So that was never eligible for state funding because it's regular programming for Auburn High School. Another feature I'd like to speak about uh, on this uh, rendition right here is um, close to the cafeteria, what you have, would have now is the AP offices over there, the assistant principals. And so that really speaks to the safety, the security, and the orderly uh, operation of the school. Uh, it's a lot more, uh, the, 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 they would be more readily available and uh, they would be close to, you know, quote unquote where the action is because the lunch, the lunch period is, is the, uh, the busiest time of the day, if you will. Most traffic, most students. Any other comments on any of the plans? Just to explain the C's real quick, just so you can see the plans again. Um, the two C options, we have option C1, which is a multi-purpose space with a stage and pulled out bleachers. And then everything else we've, we've been talking about. Can I make a comment on that too? Ooh. With that multi-purpose room, and Mr. Beals, correct me if I'm um, wrong on this, but uh, the only place that I am I'm aware of that has this similar setup is that Laconia at the middle school. Is that correct? That, that you I, I think I think it is much more of a middle school model than a high school model. Um, you, if if I look at it from, it's still a cement box. That while you can dress a cement box with acoustical panels, etc. The upholstered chairs of an auditorium have such a significant impact on the performance and the audience's enjoyment of the performance. You're still, as you are tonight, sitting in a cement box in either a folding chair or a bleacher. So as many acoustical panels as can be in the room, it's a different feel. Laconia Middle School has a beautiful multi-purpose room that serves as their theater, black box theater. Uh, with movable and it's really a functioning aspect of a lot of programming pieces for during the school day when they don't need the whole gym. So just for your consideration, remember that we have to think long term and is, is this what is going to be best for us for you know, down the road, presently and down the road. And then just to continue on to, to finish that, in option C2 has the auditorium space that we're using the grade in this option, but we definitely could look at the option of putting on this side, um, 450 seats and a stage. And again, if 450 seats does not make the most sense to people, please speak up and let us, let us know. All right, I think we've gone through the options a couple times. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any other comments. I don't know, Mr. Beals, if you wanna um, yeah, I just, I'll just offer a follow-up comment. Um, part of the current challenge of our gymatorium is the continuation of a viewpoint of competition between our performing arts students and our athletes. From a scheduling perspective, you can't do both at the same time. So one is inherently gonna move so the other can have the space. The vast majority of the usage of the space is for athletics. So our performing arts students in music, whether choral or instrumental, and certainly our theater students, always have felt that they are second class, second fiddle to the main function of what a gym is for, which is for PE programming and athletics. My, I have big concerns about that as a multi-purpose room because the multi-purpose room, again, would have brick walls, a bleacher, wood flooring, baskets, the mindset is going to be, while yes, there's a stage in that, uh, it's still going to be viewed, in my opinion, as a PE, an athletic space. Um, as a voting member of the community, uh, I, my biggest concerns are this is the third time this is coming forward on the ballot, and with a 
positive 59% vote in year one, and a little bit backward step at 57% of the vote in year two, we need to get this passed. And the option that I believe has the best opportunity to pass without creating competition between groups is option C2, with some advantages looking at it from feedback that I have heard from our theater people, from our music people, and the audience last night, which would be, let's make the auditorium bigger than 450 seats, let's ensure to the earlier questions that we have appropriate green room, dressing rooms, changing rooms, because we can't be doing it on the fly, Let's make sure that we can at least have the current music rooms and spaces interact with the space. And that doesn't mean it has to be abutting it. But we have to thoughtfully go back with direction to the architect to say, how can we modify it? I think when the cost would go up from that 16 million in that option to something higher than that, because you're making it bigger, but it doesn't create that other element of the cost is getting this other gym and we're now creating something. The, new, the, the renovated gym at Alvern will be very, ter it will be terrific. In addition to the superintendent's comments about the gym being redone, the new tennis courts, the athletic field is also being redone. So athletics is really, and, and physical education are really benefiting by the board action taken in June. We need to ensure our performing arts students have a significant add-on to their current experience at Auburn High School. And I think that's a palatable aspect of the cost will come down and we'll fine-tune plans to make that auditorium meet the better needs of our community, which is roughly a 550 to 600 seat auditorium. And one question that came up last night was how often will the auditorium be used? So besides all the curricular things that are going on in there and the academic uh, activities that are going on in there, um, it would also give availability uh, and, a, and a nice resource for uh, middle school kids to come up and use it too and be able to perform there. It'll be a, to them, it'll be a very big deal and I think that's something great to, to provide for them also. But there's also been, um, for instance, there's been uh, uh, dance recitals uh, held outside of this area with Hudson kids uh, because we don't have the space for it. and. Uh, We've already uh, heard from them that if this was available, they would absolutely use it for that reason. In addition to that, you would have the availability to have uh, music performances, uh, you know, strictly for the community and other community uses that you could have. So this has um, a pretty wide use um, for, uh, for the uh, facility. This is all good stuff. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll get to stand up in my deliberative session and talk about wants versus needs. You know, we need to have the security. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think everybody agrees to that. And I think the concept of whether it's a multi-purpose room or a, an auditorium or whatever we want to call it might be considered a, a nice to have, okay? So I would think splitting it into two articles might be a way to go. One is we got to have the security stuff done and we got to renovate the, the cafeteria as an example for security purposes, et cetera. And then we look at, okay, that's one of the C's. And now for the second one is, okay, let's talk about the concept of having uh, the ability to have something for our performing arts and have a very robust discussion around that. But I think the thing that short-circuited it last time is there was, it was a big chunk of money and I, I don't think it was articulated quite clear enough that you know, there were some people in the audience that said, well, that's a want, it's not a need. So if we address the needs and then really do our homework around the want, and, and have a couple of different scenarios so that we can talk about that, I, th I think is the best way to go so we can address the things that need to be done. And, and I, I don't disagree with, with what Mr. Beals is saying, is that the performing arts thing is, is, is awesome. 
you know, we have the Friends of Music, we have a lot of things that are going on in the community that it can't take advantage of the facility. And I think that would be a really great thing. But again, I think we have to kind of look at, you know, kind of splitting that a little bit uh, down the middle and saying, you know, let's take care of this stuff first, and then if that passes, let's get this stuff done too. And I think those are absolutely valid points, and, and considering the voting history in the town and the culture of the town, I think those are very good points. But, and, and I do uh, agree with the concept of need versus want, but I think there's an also another concept of standard. What is the standard for the students of New Hampshire? And in communities which are well-off, communities that are not well-off, and the communities in the middle, only two don't have an auditorium, and that's us in London Dairy. And I think that has to go into consideration too. Um, so I can see where someone would say that would be a want, but I think in this state, I, th I think it's well shown that it's pretty much a standard for students in the state. Um, I agree with that because just anybody coming into the state, they're gonna look at where they wanna put their kids and they're gonna look at, compare us to Wyndham and to Pinkerton and to these other towns and as you know, I grew up in New Hampshire, I've been, and Alvern used to be, ooh, the school to go to, and now it's not the school to go to. It's the other schools. And if we want people to come into our community and keep Hudson growing, I think theater is definitely um, a needed aspect to keep our town growing and our real estate prices and everything, you know, going in the right direction. So. And this came up last night too. What's the number one question a family asked before they moved to our town? What are the schools like? And that's their number one thing. And I think that we've, we, we, all along, we've had very good um, instruction curriculum and we're, we're improving that. But to add this other feature to it, I think would, would you know, bring it up to uh, a, a higher standard. And our, our newly fashioned uh, vision statement um, is to you know, make this uh, a, a educational excellence would be the expectation. Uh, when, we, when you have that, then um, that, along with you know all these features, are something that a, a family is going to look for. The, that that vision statement that we have is specifically going to ring true if, at, at, at in the future dates, that people say Hudson is the town I want to move to, and it's the town I want to move to because of the schools. And since that, like I said, is the number one feature for for a family moving in. As goes the schools, goes the town. Is it not on? Oops, sorry. I just wanted to bring up the fact that we did do a strategic plan. In our strategic plan, we do have um, exhibitions of learning. One of our English teachers already is doing the exhibition of learning, which are TED Talks. The auditorium would be an awesome way of promoting those TED Talks. Right now, our little tiny theater on the third floor is overflowing when, when that class um, does their TED Talks. We can't fit everybody in that wants to see that class perform. So um, just take that into consideration when you're looking at these options, because wouldn't that be a nice way to highlight the, the work that these kids are doing? And I know it hasn't been broken out to show the cost estimate, but wouldn't it be safe to assume that if you did A or B now with the, perhaps we'll do an auditorium in the future, rising costs of, of construction materials and, and all different things, I think in the long run, it's important to keep in mind that it may be more expensive or would be more expensive than just doing one of the C or D options to begin with. You're, you're absolutely right. So yeah, yeah, construction costs have continued to rise every year. Uh, five to six percent. So yes, there will be an added cost every year. It's delayed. So um, we saw that when we took the original plan and we looked at it for year two. Obviously, to do that same plan, it was a lot more. Um, so we had to make some cuts, and that's we're back to, to cuts again to try to get it at a lower number. So you're absolutely right. So one of the questions I have for the audience as we on the board and, and the district is trying to figure out where we go with this. How do the numbers feel, right? So it's a huge cut from last year, seven, down seven million. It seems like the ballpark we're in last night 
seemed comfortable to people, what's your reaction? So if we do decide, okay, let's add more seats or we want to change something, is this the range we need to stay in? Can we go higher? Do we need to go lower? Like, what's the thought process with that? Two weeks ago in the Boston Globe, there was a huge article about school renovation in Massachusetts. And I was absolutely flabbergasted with the prices they were quoting. $235 million to do a new high school, over $400 million. So I realize people are gonna say, well, that's Massachusetts and they always spend lots of money. But considering that the historic building, the building where I taught for 34 years, still needs renovation. And the fact that our band students have to transport their tubas and drums in the rain from the music room to get over to the gym in order to play their concerts. I, while this is a large amount of money, it pales in comparison to new ground up construction. I believe that, I, I'm hopeful that there are so many people watching these uh, telecasts that they realize that they need to go out and vote. 20% of the people in this town who are voting for these important, um, life-changing for some kids opportunities is too few. Where are the voters? They need to get out. They need to hear this information. I do not think that these numbers are unrealistic. Thank you. J just to build on that, where we're seeing construction costs dollars per square foot when we break it down. We're about $280 per square foot when we start to add things up. And that's what the construction market's telling us is happening right now. So as, as you just said, when you start adding that up to a whole school or even to a bigger space, those numbers add up pretty quickly. Yes. When you write this up on the ballot or whatever, are we gonna have a listing the cost that it's gonna cost everybody? Like, can we put an example? Like, So, at, well, every Warren article that goes on comes with the cost and the tax impact. So they know it's only gonna be like 100 bucks per year? Exactly, an annual cost will be on the, um, the Warren article along with the total cost of the project. Right, because I think that will help. I mean, I personally, $100, that's, it's a no-brainer to me. Um, I, I just want to make sure everybody knows that when they're reading it that they just don't see the large number and wave it away. It, it, even, even if it was um, the highest option, it would be $10 a month. Yeah. Come on, people. <laughs> Let's make the change. I'll just add one comment, and it was not meant to be adversarial from a previous speaker. We have to have people stand up, as previous speakers talked about, and vote. We need to stand up and not separate performing arts from regular programming. It's a need. It's a long time need in this community and we can't continue to have the performing arts students, their families, their alumni feeling as though we're in competition. When we go to a second warrant article, we're back in competition. We are equally important to the whole big package. They're all needs. I urge you to keep everything together and move forward. And to that point, People were saying last night, well, you know, this isn't really an, academic, an addition in academics. It absolutely is. Performing arts, the athletic, you know, PE, those are all curricular activities. They all add value to the curriculum and to the students' um, growth and the students' development. So they, they really, they truly are an addition to it. And the reason that came up, too, was because we were talking about the possibility of maybe doing some other fixes into the, the main building. And uh, Mr. Beals, had uh, brought up that there's probably, is there 14 more spaces? So, so there's, about, there's about 14 more spaces that aren't done. All the other spaces through the generosity of the trustees and through the use of the operating budget have been improved significantly. Uh, all the labs have been improved, uh, renovated, not just improved, but renovated from the floor to the ceiling tile, all the way and everything in between. And uh, we 
we are on a schedule for, I believe, in the summer of, two, of 2021 to complete that. So it's not that we're letting the, the middle of the building go, if you will. That's, all, that's already being addressed and it has been addressed for the last seven years, as Mr. Bill said. And then you have the CTE on one side, and this would, this would really, for the, you know, the bang for your buck, if you will, um, make the school in a very attractive place to go to school. I just want to add one comment, um, talking about performing arts and its importance being a need. There are numerous studies that show students participating in music and performing arts experience higher grades. You see an improvement in attendance and an improvement in graduation rates. There's a direct relationship that has been shown with that. Jay, could I could suggest we conduct the straw poll, and then if there's still time and people have questions, we come back to that? Sounds great. I agree with that. Um, I do want to just point out for those um, here and at home, the school board is the, the people that asked for this meeting tonight. They really want to hear your input. This is their contact information. Please reach out to them, talk to them. As uh, Superintendent Russell pointed out at the beginning, they want to hear your feedback. They want to, they want to hear from you. So here's their phone number, their, their email address. Tell them what option you like. Tell them, tell them about the size of the auditorium or no auditorium or, or the gymnasium or a, anything that spoke to you tonight. Um, they want your feedback. They really do to, to help inform the decision they're gonna make. So um, please speak to them. And, and again, here's their, their information. I'm gonna go back, we'll put, I'll put this up after, but I wanna go back so we can just see all the options next to each other here. Um, so we have A, B, C1, C2, and D. Those are the options we've gone through for the last hour. What we're gonna do is the first, we're gonna do this in two rounds. So the first round is vote for any of the options you like. So if you liked all the options and you, all think, and you think each one of them is a, a, um, an improvement and something that should be done and you'd be happy with that improvement, raise your hand. So for everything from A, B, C1, C2 to D. So if you think they're all great, your hand's gonna go up every time. If you think one of them in particular is not good, then don't put your hand up for that one. So you can vote as many times as you want. You can vote for all five, you can vote for four, three, two, whatever number you want. So that's round number one. Round number two is we're gonna take the top two, Lance over there is gonna count hands. We're gonna take the top two that we voted on and we're gonna vote on just those two options and you can only vote for one at that time and we're gonna see which one comes in higher. So option one is vote for anything that you would support as a project. That makes sense? So your hand can go up as many times as you want this first time. So option A that we talked about, people in support of option A, just the entry piece. That's just the entry piece. Option B, which takes that entry piece and also adds the security of the cafeteria into that. Okay. Option C1, which takes that option B and adds that multi-purpose room into it now. So that's an additional piece that gets added to B, the multi-purpose room. How many people are in support of the multi-purpose room being added to that? <laughs> C2, which takes everything we talked about in B and adds a performance space, which is the auditorium space. And then option D, which takes B and adds the performance space, the, multi the auditorium space, and that gymnasium space into that, the practice court. So many people are in favor of option D. This was great. This was really good. Thank you. C2 has 16 votes. B and A each received 12. D received 7. So, so B and A are a tie. So we'll do A, B, and C2. Is that what I'm hearing, Lance? A, B, and C2. You can All only right. vote for one. All right. So we have three options now. You only can vote for one of these. So I'm going to go through the options. Remember, you only can vote once now. Option A. How many people are just for the the new um, entry piece. 
one. Excellent. Option B, which is the entry piece plus the, um, the cafeteria renovations and, and all the pieces that happen inside the school, and the site also included. So that's B. How many people are for B? Okay. C2, which is the option B we just talked about, plus the auditorium space on that. Excellent. So, so as, you, as you could just see, C2 to this group is the, um, the preferred option. Um, we have a few more minutes. Um, I'd love to hear if anyone wants to talk about why they voted for C2. looked at what we were presented with at the deliberative session in the, in the ballot last year of 24 million down to 16 plus or minus million, uh, $108 for the first year, assuming it's a 30 year bond, 4.25% is um, I think very affordable uh, from my perspective as somebody who's living on a fixed income mm -hmm. and has to really make some decisions about, you know, how we spend my money. Anyone else want to speak to the, the options or why they voted for an option? Okay. Any tweaks that people would see to happen to C2? I, I think I heard one tweak of maybe sliding that closer to the, the school. That's, that's a tweak people are, wanna, would maybe like to see how that works. Um, I think we've talked about the number of seats, maybe increasing the number of seats and make sure we have some practice spaces, actually some, some dressing room spaces off that. Um, excellent. I want to put up again for everyone, oops, there we go, uh, the contact information. So if there's no more questions, we're going to wrap this up. I really do appreciate you coming out. Um, the board, I, I will we'll speak for the board in this one case and say that they do appreciate you coming out because they really did want to get some feedback. So thank you very much for coming out. Thank you to the people at home. Please do contact board members if you do have any input or any suggestions or any questions. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.